Have you ever tried to stay in balance with your motorcycle still? Almost impossible, right? It is easier if you open the throttle. Gyroscopic effects are a very hot topic in pubs. They are often cited in motorcycles discussions. However, from my experience, only a few people have really understood what they are talking about. So today we are going to acknowledge what they are and how they work. Stay there because you are going to discover one of the most crucial motorcycles phenomenon. Let us start with the practical observation. A stationary motorcycle without a stand just falls to the ground. A motorcycle that is moving stays upright by itself. Why? One of the effects that make it possible is precisely the gyroscopic effect. To better understand it, it is better to introduce the inertial effect first. So let us start by experimenting together. Suppose that I want to stop things that are moving. Alternatively, at least I want to deviate their trajectory. So I decided to start with a small object with a mass of just a few grams. It is the object that you can see in the picture. I decided to stand in front of it boldly and try to deviate with my hands. I guess you already know I'm not going to go home very happy, or maybe I'm not going to go home at all. So I understand that even if the mass is tiny, I have another problem, and this problem is the velocity. In fact, a bullet of just 10 grams can exceed the velocity of 3000 km per hour. So in this case, I decide to use a much slower object. This time I take an object that is going just to 30 km per hour. And again, I decide to boldly stand in front of it, to try to stop it or at least to deviate it. The object is the object that you can see in the picture. Once again, it is better if I don't take in commitments. So we understand that even if an object is moving very slowly, at just 30 km per hour, we have another problem, that is the mass. In fact, a truck can exceed a mass of 25 tons. So I start asking to myself, it is a problem of velocity or mass? Luckily, physicists come to help and tell us that it is actually a problem of the product of the two, of the product of the velocity times the mass. And this quantity is called momentum. So every object that is moving has a momentum, and the higher is this momentum, the most difficult is to change its mind. In fact, every mass that has a momentum tends to maintain it. In a certain way, we could say that a mass is lazy, because he doesn't want to change its mind, he doesn't want to change doing what he is already doing. If it is motionless, it won't keep staying motionless. If instead is moving, it wants to keep moving. If you want to change the mind of the mass, we need to apply a force. Thanks to a force, we can stop it, accelerate it, or deviate its trajectory. When thinking about riding a motorcycle, we have a mass, which is the mass of the rider and the mass of the vehicle. But we also have a velocity, so we have momentum, and we tend to keep it. For this reason, we are lazy, if we are going straight, we tend to keep going straight. This is the first reason why we can consider our system having a certain stability. However, how did we reach that condition? Why we just didn't fall before? Inertial effects alone are not able to answer this question. We need to have something more. And these more are, of course, the gyroscopic effects. Now that we have introduced the inertial effects, we can better understand the gyroscopic effects because they are a sort of cousins of the inertial effects, but for things that rotate. Gyroscopic effects are very curious phenomena and we can observe them every time we ride a motorcycle. They are continuously manifested during the ride. Before analyzing the effect that they produce on the vehicle, we can start with very simple observations. We will start with the very simple experiments that you can easily replicate at home. I take this bike and I rotate the steering very fast. As you can see, it is relatively easy. The steering is completely loose and the frame of the bike remains unmoving. 
Now let me spin the front wheel. If I turn the steering now, it is hard and I can see that the frame of the bike is moving in the opposite direction. We have just experienced that objects that are rotating want to maintain the same axis of rotation. Again, we have observed the laziness of bodies, so when we try to rotate the wheel around a different axis, it refuses to do so, similarly to the bullet and truck. So now we have an idea about what, but we still don't know why. To give you a physical sense of what we have seen till now, I will give you some consideration, starting by the more intuitive inertial effects. Think about the bike's wheel, it has a mass. Nevertheless, we can also think of it as having a set of masses. It is made of many elements, molecules, atoms, neutrons and so on. If the wheel is rotating and we take a photo to freeze it, we see the following situation. Every mass has its own velocity. Moreover, they will keep having the same velocity. The mass is lazy. However, since the masses are kept all together thanks to the structure of the wheel, they are forced to turn around the axle. Let us see what happens when you turn the steering. In the beginning, the masses have a velocity that is represented by the green arrows. However, when we turn the steering, we are forcing them to have the velocity represented by the yellow arrows. Do you recall the bullet and truck? They do not change their trajectory very quickly. The same applies to the masses of the wheel. Furthermore, they show their reluctance as we have seen before. We have figured out the reasons behind the strange behavior of the rotating body and we are starting to understand why a motorcycle is stable to stay upright by itself. This effect is proportional to the rotating speed of the wheel, to the rotating speed of the steer and to the mass of the wheel. So we now start to understand why there is such an effort to reduce the mass of a rotating object like for instance the wheels. Because in this way you can provide a more agile and less physical vehicle. We have just talked about the wheels, but there are many other objects that are rotating on our motorcycle. The camshaft, the crankshaft, the flying wheel and many others. And all of them have a mass and a very high angular velocity. They all contribute to the overall gyroscopic effect. In fact, the overall gyroscopic effect is given by the sum of the single components. In order to test this concept, we can perform many experiments. I'm just going to explain to you one of them, and you can easily replicate it with your motorcycle. If you ride downhill with no gear selected, you will feel that the motorcycle is very reactive almost like a bike. You may also experience a sense of instability. Then you can repeat this same exercise, again riding in neutral, but this time you open the throttle and push the engine to high RPMs. This time the motorcycle is very stable and changing direction is not very easy anymore. Depending on what you are looking for, stability may help you or it could be an obstacle. If you are riding a touring motorcycle, for instance, having a good stability is essential for safety and comfort purposes. However, if you are riding a racing motorcycle, you are going to need a highly reactive vehicle to be faster in any maneuver. Of course, the motorcycle will be more nervous and not as comfortable. Actually, things are much more complicated than that. But this is a very good starting point in order to understand how these things work. Very well, you have just understood gyroscopic effects, how they work, their nature, and how they affect the behavior of your motorcycle. The Motorcycle Academy project has built the best online course ever created before. It has been possible thanks to the cooperation of professionals 
with years of experience in the top class of the MotoGP. If you want to understand more and if you want to dominate the most exciting vehicle in the world, just follow the maps video and click the link below. You will receive more videos and free material. See you the next time and thanks for watching.